we go. All right. Well, this is episode one, I guess, <laughs> of, the, of the podcast that has no name yet. And uh, I'm Dan Yerman, and I'm the owner of Reword. And I'm talking with Saul Bierenbaum, the owner of Camp Walden. Is That's that- right. Co-owner, my wife and I, and our closest friends, Howie and Sari, together own Camp Walden. Thank you, Dan. Um, tell me about how you got into the camp business. Well, it's a great uh, story, and uh, I'm often asked to speak to high school students about uh, the readiness to change course is usually the theme. Um, I thought I was going to be a doctor. I was uh, taking my pre-meds, my undergraduate degrees in mathematics. I did for fun in my, in my spare time, my organic chemistry, and physics and bio and so on, and wrote the MCATs, and I was all ready to go. I just needed a summer job uh, to pass the time, really, and save the money for the tuition I would need one day. So I enjoyed working with kids. I had a long history of babysitting and tutoring, and uh, after uh, earning some money doing some painting, Uh, In my early university years, I realized at the end of June that I had enough money to pay for the next year's tuition and wanted to get out there and work with the kids. So I faxed my resume to 10 day camps in uh, the Toronto area. Camp Robin Hood was the first to respond. I met the owner there, Larry. He invited me to to come in and begin pre-camp the very next day, which I did. That's when I met his daughter, Sari, who uh, put her arm around me and said, my dad said great things about you. And he took, she took me under her wing. I uh, soon uh, met her husband, Howie, and so began a wonderful friendship. I worked there for several years and realized that this was a true passion. This was my true love, summer camping. Like in medicine, I have the ability to not just uh, uh, in- influence the individual, but their whole family. And uh, that was the real attraction for me. So we began, Howie, Sarah, and myself, um, the search for something we could own together, an overnight camp that the day campers could grow into. And uh, we thought this could take 10 years, 20 years, but two and a half years later, the founder of Camp Walden, Ted Cole, and his wife, Elaine Cole, approached us and asked us if we wanted to take over the camp. I spent a summer uh, studying under uh, Ted and being the assistant director there. And in September 5th of 2003, I became the 28-year-old director. I was a bachelor at the time and wonderful girlfriend, Jen, who later became my wife and mother to our four children. And uh, it's been nearly a 20-year journey ever since of growing and, uh, and, and healing and just wonderful personal development for me. All of my, many of my closest friendships are from my experiences at Wald. And so I'm coming up on the 20th summer. Wow. That's an incredible story. Mm-hmm. That is, that is, talk about like turning left. Yeah. Yeah. People say, do you use your math ever? I mean, you've got this math background, the science background, and I don't use the specific calculus every day, but an approach to problem solving and so on. So uh, when I speak to young people about being ready to change direction to the time you spent on goal A wasn't wasted. Uh, It it can always be applied to whatever goal B is. So, all right. So let's, uh, let's talk about these. Let's talk about getting to this 20 year anniversary has been a little bit of a wild ride the last couple of years. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. So let me just set the stage for our, the people who aren't really listening because no one's really listening to this. (laughs) Um, But so I'm, I'm a Robin Hood parent. I have two kids who have been going to Robin Hood. Well, my younger son, this was his first summer. He loved it. Uh, My younger, my older son has been going for a couple of years and did the first Walden weekend this year. Yes. And so I myself, I grew up in, I was a Wahana kid. Mm-hmm. Um, and so didn't have the best experience there. And so I was really um, a little bit hesitant about all summer camps because my summer camp experience wasn't great. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and so I was really on the fence and cause last year was gonna be my kid's first year um, and then COVID. And then I got your first email and I gotta tell you, that email made me feel like everything was going to be okay and that you were the one who was going to make it be okay. And I really, that's one parent to another parent. Thank I remember you. where I was. I was in front of Leo Beck yeah. in Arlington with my kids. It was May 8th or 9th or something. I don't remember the day. I don't even have the email anymore. But I right. remember standing there. My kids could have fallen off a hill and I wouldn't have noticed because I was sitting there reading it mm-hmm. and I knew that everything was going to be okay. 
And yeah. that's what I want to talk to you about today. That sure. on that series of emails, because as a writing company, we look for great writing and we, we value it. And when we see it, we want to call it out and, oh my God, this was really something. So I want to ask you a couple of questions about it. I have them written down. So I want you to, I want you to tell me, I want you to describe the moment to me when you realized that you had to write that email, when you knew you had to shut it down. What was that like for you? Sure. Um, first of all, I'm just so flattered by the fact that you made contact. I'm, I follow your uh, your feed, and I love to to read uh, everything that you post. And oh, I, I don't think of myself as a writer. It's so interesting. I um, I, I thank you. I I. I've received a number of compliments about this piece of writing, and I can't take full credit, um, and I'll speak to that in a moment, but I don't normally think of myself as a writer. I think of myself as a talker, as a presenter. I, I, alongside some of that math background I told you about, I love to be on the stage and, and to act in shows and so on. So when I write, I, I, I really think about what I would say, what I want to say, and then sometimes I'll, I'll record what I, what I say and then write. So I really... So I, I knew that I knew that when camps were closed, and, I, and and by the way, you're talking about the letter when when the announcement was made by Doug Ford, and I see that letter as sort of part of a series of letters. Thank you for sort of using the word series because I I saw the there was a lead up to that to that letter, a series of letters that brought us to that point, a, a process of trust building, and uh, and then ultimately the letter that had to be written, and. Um, I mean, I could answer your, your question specifically, but generally, I myself held on to hope that camps would not be closed right up till the last minute. You know, someone, a science background, I grounded, it was grounded in the facts just like everybody else. And the writing was on the wall for some time, but my love for camp and my hopefulness is what prevailed. So it really, I mean, there was this lingering feeling of if they close, you're going to have to write a letter. And if they open us, you're going to have to write a letter. That was held up here. I sort of, the image I have in my head is sort of like a pen sitting on a legal pad of paper that's blank. And it stared at me every every morning, noon, and night that June, July was approach, was getting one day closer. I'd, I'd look over at that pen and paper metaphorically and say, I better start thinking about that. But something in me, something in me to answer specifically, something in me was triggered when I was up at camp two days before the announcement itself. You're right. It was, uh, it was in mid-May of 2020, the spring of 2020, where just the imagery, the, the, the symbolism of being there alone on the property and what it will mean for this place to be empty in its most beautiful season really hit me. And then the words poured out. It's, it was, I mean, I wish I, I don't have it anymore. I wish I did. I'm, I am going to try. I've got it. I've got it all. You, okay, <laughs> you well. can imagine I've got it all. And actually, Howie and Sarah and Jen and I are going to make a, a little coffee table book. We're going to make two copies, one for their family and one for ours, because whatever it means for other people, for us, these letters are, are symbols of the heart and soul that we put into these last year and a half, two years. Let me ask you something. When you finally sat down and you knew you had to write it, you knew you had to do it, and you have already, you talked about it in your head and you had the words written down and you looked at the camp, what was your writing strategy? When you sat down to write that note, what did you have to, what did you know that you had to put in it? How did you think, and maybe you didn't think, but how did you craft it, if you can remember? And, 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 and how did you, strategically, how did you set it up to create that trust um, when, uh, you know, in, and having to create trust and deliver bad news at the same time, how did you strategically do that? I, I, my, st my, my structure and my style are sort of always the same. They begin with um, a very visual beginning. So I'm a visual person. I move my hands a lot. I think in metaphors. I, 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 I bend things in space to, to sort of help myself process. So I always begin with pen and paper. And uh, it's usually a few words, a picture, 
um, some some sort of symbol to to carry the the meaning of those words. And they they fill a they fill a notebook, and that notebook will will later you know go and go on the shelf, and and I won't touch it. I'll then when it when I have to write when it when it hits me, okay, you can't procrastinate this anymore. Now's the time. That's when I sit down at the, at Word, Microsoft Word, and I just I I put out all the pieces uh, in no particular order. Yeah. And then I'll just dive into dive into the idea that inspires me and I'll begin to talk in my head and write what I'm saying. So it will it will be much longer than sure. what the the end copy uh, has. And then and some of these ideas will become I'll see that when they're on my laptop, they're they weren't you know, they won't make the final edit. So I'll delete them and I'm left with the heart. And that's when I get into reordering and bridging and bolding and structuring and then i need to walk away and usually they'll be asleep and i will wake up re-inspired i'll return to it and uh, what i'm left with is a piece where i am totally attached to every word i don't want any editor to to take away a single dot mm -hmm. but on a deeper level i know it's way too long so I sent it to um, Jen and Howie and Sari, and uh, they're really the only ones that I trust to redline. <laughs> and it hurts every every cut hurts my soul, but I don't tell them. <laughs> and uh, and uh, <laughs> yeah. And then I I um, I fight. I fight them on um, on one or two of the ones that I'm that I'm stuck on now. This particular letter, I Howie and I remember a moment. So we're, we're talking about the letter called "Lost and Found." We're talking about a letter that that uh, that had a structure where um, the letter is extremely short. It's something along the lines of, "As you've heard, dear families, if you've heard, camps have closed. It's uh, it's it's terrible. Um, if uh, you, you've asked us to help you communicate this with your kid, uh, please read the attached letter. If you think it's appropriate, please right. read it to your child." And then the attachment is the letter I write to children. And in that letter, I mean, this is this is Saul talking to the kids. This is this is what I do. This is. This is not um, branding. This is not marketing. This is not persuasion. This is not manipulation. This is Saul talking to the children. And, um, and it, that part comes very naturally to me. And I had to visualize myself at camp away from the parents. I didn't want to censor myself because the parents are listening in. And you'll recall that there's a sentence that says that that says if you initially I could call it but we'll call it in a second if you if you if you if you feel like if anybody says to you why are you whining about missing a summer at your fancy summer camp you can tell them to dollar sign percent sign slash off in other words the parent could insert whatever swear word they they wanted which was age appropriate and Howie's instinct, to his credit, this is not, not a story about Howie being mistaken, to his credit, he acted as editor and asked me, can we really say this? <laughs> Should we, like, people are going to say, fuck off in a letter. Like, can we really say this? Uh, this is like, if the camp's just closed, do you want, you want to say to children, tell your friends to fuck off if they tell you? That? Good question. <laughs> I said, I can't explain it, Howie. You just got to trust me on this one. I'm talking to the kids. And he was in the middle of, of the Robin Hood question and what was happening there. He said, Saul, you know I trust you. Just do what you think is best and press send. And that's what I did. That's what we did. And the real, the authenticity of the letter is what I love most, that it's it's truly what I would have said to the kids if we were together there at camp and having this communication. How did you know it was ready to send? When did you know? Okay, we're sending this right now. When did you feel it in, in your heart? Did you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Doug Ford announced. No, no, no. I mean, like, yeah. like, I mean, like when you, when you felt like you had said everything, like when, you, when, when did you know that the editing process was done? Yeah. It's for me that like, I, I, I not, I'm not 
it's just a, this is a description of my emotions, not of the quality of the letter. For yeah. me, the letter is perfect. It's, it's for me that the letter is perfect. And then how in Syrian gen make their edits. And then I realize it's more perfect. <laughs> so it's, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always eager to send it. I'm always, uh, I'm always feeling like, okay, this is, this is right. But it's funny in this situation, I wrote, I wrote half of it up at camp lakeside. Oh. And then, and then that sleep took place here in Toronto. I driven, we drove home that, that night. We slept in Toronto and then I got a text saying, you better watch Ford. There could be an announcement today. I continued writing that morning. There was the announcement, that conversation with Howie and fuck off and whether we should say it was happening moments after the announcement. Um, I, I felt this, this strong push that the community needs you now. The people need us now. It's not the time for perfecting the semicolon. It's yeah. the time to be there for the community. That, so that I, 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 I knew the answer to your question is, as soon as I had that check-in with Howie, it was out. Yes, this, what kind of reaction? I mean, it's a pretty, it was a pretty bold piece as we've spoken about many times. We had the, we had the, Hubert moment in there and and everything. What reaction were you expecting? And to follow up, was there anything about the reaction that surprised you? I I I didn't have expectations. Hmm. I felt a duty. This was a duty. I abandoned everything. I abandoned all thoughts of the financial implications we have and all, all thoughts of the financial implications and what are we going to do instead this summer and you know we'll, we'll, what will this mean for 2021 all of that went away i thought about this is my this is my part this is my moment this is the moment that I will reflect on to my grandkids you know I didn't develop a vaccine I didn't work in a hospital and I didn't I didn't become the doctor that I that I thought I might be and be there in that way through this pandemic so I'm a I'm a I'm not a frontline worker I'm a second line worker I was there my calling was to be there for the emotional needs of kids who had been in lockdown for months and had the prospect of further lockdown for many months to come. So the duty called and, and that was that was that was it. That was that was my only expectation was of myself. Will I be will I be happy with myself when I tell the story to my grandkids? And um, what was surprising was the the lengthy thoughtful thank yous that we received from families. Like I'm trying, I'm, 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 it was an obvious thing for me to talk to the kids directly. Um, and later I found out that we were sort of the only ones that approached it that way. And, and that's, that's fine and that's wonderful. And all the camps handled this in, in their own ways and in their own wonderful ways. Um, the, the, the postings on social media, the thank yous that we received that was that was one that was that 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 with all the uprooting that was happening in the homes of our of our camper families that that, that they took the time to respond to us in that way that was that was most exciting the response was wholly positive and i felt deeply proud to have been part of that moment yeah i mean i i was one of those people i remember responding to you i i, you. I and i uh it was it, it was um i couldn't help myself I could not help myself. I was compelled to respond to that. It's one of those things you don't really, you don't really get that often from a form. Not, I mean, from a mass, a mass email. But I let me ask you this: How did it feel to write? Well, I want to speak to the writers. Yeah. So, so that is a form of writing as well. And I want to tell you that every response, including yours, we we pumped into a Google Doc. And fast forward to the summer of twenty. 20, the darkest summer of my life, a summer of emptiness, a summer I barely remember. Um, when I felt low, I opened your letter and the 500 other letters and, and your writing, your collective writing, the Walden community's writing to me, to us, was what carried our families 
through our darkest summer. So there is this, this parody that this is what a community is, right? This is what makes this writing. When we talk about this event, it's not my letter. It's, it's the writing we did to each other to show this interdependence, to show this love, care, concern, grief. Like that, that's the message to your listeners, which yeah. will be many. Once, oh, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. once this episode gets out. <laughs> um, let me ask you this. How did it feel to write the end of the summer 2021 letter? Wow. Wow. I mean, I, I just, I love symmetry and I love, I love a, a good storyline. And it's just like, I read my that whole movie. life. Thank you. My whole life sort of, that, that we, we ventured out on this, on this, on this uh, profession of summer camping and thought like, what is it we do? Is it, we want to do something meaningful in this world. And after the summer of 2021, I know that, I know that we made a, I know that we made a small impact on hundreds of people for the rest of their life. And oh my God, uh, you made a massive. I feel very proud. Massive. I feel very proud. It was, it felt amazing to write that letter again, part of the series, part of the coffee table book. Totally. Hopefully the door, the chapter is closed or the volume is closed on, on this COVID story. And we look forward to the next adventure. All right. Let me ask you one more question. This is, this is really more like the business side of this interview. Sure. What advice would you give writers or people in your position rather who need to write in a moment, probably not quite like this, but like this, when you're under the gun, you've got to create, you've got to deliver bad news and create trust. What would you, what advice would you give to other CEOs, marketing directors, marketing executives? What, what can they learn from what you did? Yeah. So as I mentioned, um, I use lots of words and Howie Seri Jen helped me bring it down. And that is particularly good advice when delivering bad news. Um, I, when it, when it, in that letter that, uh, that I sent to the kids, uh, one of the sentences is, is, is simply, camp is not happening. It's as, it's as simple as that. They're not changing their minds. Like it, it answers every question resolutely without any uh, without any metaphor, which I love to use in most other cases. It's the, the, the cold, hard facts um, presented, prepared for you, open, you, you, you invite your listener or your reader to, uh, to join you. And you. You might preempt that there's going to be a bit of bad news, some bad news coming, and then you hit with a, the simplest, most pared down uh, one or two or three sentences at most that delivers the 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 most important facts and answers to the questions that your that your reader has about those important facts, and you don't shy away from what the uh, the the bad news is. Followed by taking responsibility for your part in it, if there's any responsibility. And you know, we felt we could have maybe fought harder or fought stronger, fought and and so some of the sentences that follow are around our our responsibility in in everything and then what we will do to assist so it's sort of the it's sort of the steps of how to apologize right restoration reparation and and, and so on so acknowledgement so it, i think that's a that's a good model to use when when delivering bad news um if you if you find that you're that you're hiding behind that you're using words to hide behind a curtain that's like, I was going to say, like, if, if you're hiding behind words, it's like the hiding behind the curtain. It's like one of my children hiding behind the curtain. And this is exactly the time to, to pull it away. Um, being real is always important when, when we write. But uh, I, I'm a big fan when, when people speak or when people write to not be shy to show their weaknesses. In fact, showing weakness, showing hurt, showing pain showing um, that you too are sad about this bad news as, as we did in that letter. Uh, I think that only strengthens, that only strengthens the relationship that you have with your reader. So um, I think those are some general principles that just come to mind if a business or community or community leader needs to share some bad news. I think that's really great. And I think hearing it from somebody who had it, lived it, did it, and wrote about it is... Fantastic. Saul, this was so great. I'm so glad that we got to do this. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but I'm so glad that I got a chance <laughs> to, to speak with you. If I don't see you before the summer, I will definitely see you with both my kids at Walden next year. 
Thank you so much for this really opportunity. It's it. very therapeutic for me actually to talk about all this. It's been That's quite great. a ride and um, uh, I appreciate this opportunity very much. We'll see you in the summer. I will send this, I'll, I'm gonna post this and send it to you and you can see it and we'll see how we do. Episode one. It. Great, <laughs> all the best. Take Thank care. Thank you so much, bye. Bye-bye.